Right about now, you might be thinking, what is this girl doing on stage and what is she about to talk about for the next 15 minutes, give or take? The title of my speech is How Typical. Yes, I know, doesn't make sense. <laughs> How Typical is what I would use to describe an issue that we face in our society. So flawed yet so subtle that you guys haven't even figured out what I'm addressing this very moment. Now, the entire title refers to stereotypes. Stereotypes are this, this conceptual idea that we have in our society where people are limited and labeled based on something they can't control, like their skin color or their hair color. And it's dumb, to be honest. It's a dumb concept, but sadly, it's a reality. Now, recently I came upon this experiment conducted by New York Magazine in which a group of kids, all ranging from ages and ethnicities, were asked the same question. They were asked, what does it mean to be a boy in your opinion? Now, four of these kids had similar answers. They simply said that a boy is supposed to be strong, tough, and not cry. Now, this clearly proves that an issue like this exists within our society. And these children, their answers, shows that they're adapting to this idea. Now, what I realized is when I chose to talk about this topic, I thought it would be simple, not that problematic, but I was wrong. It's a lot more problematic, problematic than I ever actually expected it to be. Now, um, another experiment I actually came upon, luckily, <laughs> Um, was according to the NAACP, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. In the 1940s in the US, a psychological experiment known as the Dahl Test was designed to test the de degree of marginalization felt by African American children due to prejudice, discrimination, and racial segregation. Now just three years ago, the test was reconducted but with Italian children. And let me tell you, the results were staggering. Basically, a test required a child to sit, have two dolls placed in front of them, a white doll and a black doll. They were then each asked a series of questions and were required to answer by pointing at either of the dolls. The first two questions were, which one is the black doll and which one is the white doll? Now this was to establish a certain level of understanding to clearly prove that each child knew the difference, which they did, they all chose correctly. Following this, they were each asked which one is the good doll and which one is the bad doll. All the children chose the black, the black doll as bad and the good doll as white. After that, a little girl, not older than seven years old, was asked why. Why black doll bad? She said, because he is all black. When asked why the white doll was good, she said, because she has blue eyes. And the last question, which doll looks like you? Now, the results for this aunt, to this question were quite heartbreaking, to say the least. All the children chose the black doll. Now, this shows that throughout this experiment, the children see themselves as bad, as black, as ugly. And it's reflected through each of their answers to these questions. Now you're probably asking yourself, how does this apply to me? Yes, it's an issue. How does it apply to me? Why should I care? If it's any consolation, I asked myself the exact same question. At first I thought, it's not affecting me now. I don't see how it could. But the more I thought about it, the more it dawned on me. Ask yourself this, if it's a problem now, what difference does it make if I do something about it? One realization will not make a difference. This speech isn't gonna magically make everyone in this room care. It will not solve the issue at hand, let's be real, it won't. It wouldn't make sense if it did. It wouldn't make sense if I somehow convinced all of you and completely changed your mindset. Now, upon realizing this, I actually tried to think of ways to solve this. Is there a way to solve this? Let's be real, people have broken through their own stereotypes before. They have 
broken through that expectation. But how? We know it's possible because these people did do so. But how? There's no such thing as a permanent solution. There's no such thing as a solution that works for everyone. This took me time to figure out, and I came up with this. Now, before I say anything, it's not going to make any sense at the beginning. <laughs> so don't be ashamed if you're a little confused. By listening. The only solution here is to listen. Now, some of you have probably thought I was going to say that the only way to solve this is to stop generalizing. Most of you probably assumed I was going to say that we have to force this idea that people are different and that we have to stop generalizing. However, forcing an idea was what started this entire issue to begin with. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you, by show of hands of course, how many of you have been asked a question before? <laughs> let me ask another question. How many of you expected me to ask that question? <laughs> exactly. Because you listened to me speak, therefore you did not assume what was going to be said. However, I have been speaking for all of that time, and I categorized all of you as people who have been asked a question before. All of you have been listening to what I've been saying for the past few minutes, therefore none of you actually thought I was going to ask that question. I have been talking for all of that time, and I categorized, I generalized, and I labeled all of you people as people who have been asked a question before. If there's one thing you could take away from my talk, I'd like you to think about what I said at the beginning, and I'd like you to think about what you hear now. Because in the beginning, it was something that we all knew, but now it's something that we understand. And that is an idea worth sharing. Thank you.